Hello and welcome to Reading Matter. My name is Nat and in this podcast I'm talking about different fiction and non-fiction books. And uh, today is the official beginning of the first season of this podcast and I was thinking that it's a bit of a challenge to me that I would like to do, uh, but also something that I feel would be interesting for you guys is to pick up the books uh, that actually belong to one and the same theme. And in particular, for now, I wanted to take a look at the books that have something to do with winter. So, welcome to the first season, and I would like to begin it with one of the books that, for me, uh, fits the winter period the most. I think it is one of the best wintery books, I guess. Uh, and uh, today I want to talk about Miss Miller's Filling for Snow, or as it's also known in the United States, Miss Miller's sense of snow um which is a danish uh, which is a novel written by a danish author peter hook i hope i'm pronouncing his name correctly <laughs> so right now when i'm recording this episode the weather outside is terrible it's raining and it's super windy so if you hear any extra noises this is just wind outside my windows and um i had a bit of a similar experience with the first time i read miss miller's feeling for snow I've read it in English, and I believe that English translation, I'm not sure if that's the only English translation, but that one was really good. I have read this book about a year ago, uh, when I first moved to Stuttgart, which has a very different climate, so the winter there is definitely much warmer than the things I'm used to. And that winter in particular, it was extremely warm, we had no snow, it was windy and rainy, uh, but extremely warm, so for New Year's, I... And generally for winter, I guess I missed a bit of cold and snow, so I decided to substitute it with books. And I picked up Miss Miller's Filling for Snow because it has been recommended by a friend of mine from a publishing house I was working in um, at the moment, and that was one of the best decisions of my life. Unfortunately, right now I don't have the book anymore because it was a used copy I got, it was super old and in a very bad condition it like the pages were literally falling out of that book so i put it back to a shared bookshelf uh, somewhere in stuttgart and decided that i'll just hunt for a nice hardcover copy because i definitely would like to read and reread this book every winter mainly uh, because it is set in denmark and a lot of the times um the protagonist smilla she thinks about her childhood, about her growing up in Greenland, which also features a lot of cold and snow and ice. And I do believe this is something that a lot of people who live in a climate where there is not much snow in winter, um, that you guys miss it as much as I do. The novel was, pu was published in 1992, um, and I believe the screen adaptation came out also at the end of the 90s. Um, 1997 if I'm not mistaken and if you think this is one of the cases when you don't have a, enough time to just dive into quite a long novel but you would like to to watch something that features a lot of like cold settings and um, more traditional snowy <laughs> atmosphere uh, and you think this film could be a good substitute I would warn you not to do that because in this case it actually is worth it to read the book first um, as most of the times are is um, I'm not super happy with this adaptation I think it's now available on Netflix but I was not at all satisfied with the filming I guess this is the moment when you see how sometimes the medium of film has to choose between two genres or two um, strands of narration and sacrifice one of them because just the two of them would not work on the TV as well as they do in the novel. In particular here I'm talking about the same approach that Umberto Eco had with his Name of the Rose when he was masking um, a more subtle social critique under a disguise of a crime fiction, crime novel, where we had an investigator who at the same time kind of uncovered not just the murderer, but also um, the motives that 
are connected to a lot of like social critic. So in the same way, in the same manner, Peter Hook does this in his novel. So in the beginning, what we think we're looking at is a thriller or a detective fiction because our protagonist, Smilla, she is um, um, an immigrant from Greenland who uh, is living in, Den in, Den in Denmark at the moment. Um, and she becomes uh, friends with one of the boys, like son of her neighbor in this um, social housing, I guess, um, that's mainly populated by immigrants from Greenland, which already hints at the deep connection of this book to a post-colonial roots of Denmark and Greenland. And one of the days, unfortunately, the boy falls off the rooftop and dies. Smilla, being a very attentive person and also somewhat an, ex an expert on the snow and ice, she notices some discrepancies about the case. What is even more disturbing, she sees how people try to cover, and by people I mean officials, uh, how they try to cover those discrepancies and definitely do not try to perceive um, this investigation as uh, murder, as a crime. So Smila begins her own investigation and um, at some point she is joined by a helper, an assistant in a way, a very silent mechanic who has a history of his own and maybe even an agenda of his own. I <laughs> will not say more about the plot of uh, it because I believe that there are some crucial spoilers that can influence your perception of the novel and just make it a little bit less fun to read. I still think it's an enjoyable read anyway, but you know, it's always nicer to discover all those things on your own. Right, so why else do I like this novel so much? Um, not just because it is um, set in a snowy country in winter and you can just enjoy the feeling and atmosphere of snow, cleanness and whiteness and coldness and freshness it brings with it. My other point of interest and love to this novel is Smila herself. I love this character. She is the kind of character I feel very comfortable with accompanying on her quest, on her way. Um, although at the same time I he I've heard a lot of opinions when people were not happy about her, when her character was exactly what put people away from the novel. Um, and I guess it depends on the taste of people, right? Because Smilla is a very reserved, cold, honest person. Sometimes she's even brutally honest, but at the same time she positions herself in the situation when she refuses to, um, to obey the social norms that lead to people lying or like distorting the truth to the point that um, yeah, they become liars and for her it is very important to be clean and sharp, I guess. She has a very sharp mind, she is into mathematics and she has, um, if not a PhD, I do not remember details right now, but she definitely has um, some university degree. The interesting fact about her as a character is also that Smilla is a daughter of um, a Greenlandic huntress and a wealthy, successful Danish doctor. So she moved to Copenhagen when she was a little bit older. Um, I think as a teenager, her father took her in because her mother disappeared. Uh, and at the same time, so as a child, she still tried to reconcile these two cultures in her head, in her mind. Um, which kind of led to this very typical for a lot of post-colonial fiction development of this hybrid identity of the character. So I believe that makes her even more interesting. Um, such a complex character can only um, make this story more interesting and more, I don't know, full, I guess, in a way. Because through Smiller, her culture, her upbringing, and the way she looks at it, we can see a lot of social critique towards the contemporary conditions, or well, contemporary to 1992, at least, um, conditions of uh, Greenlandic immigrants in Denmark. The relationship, the image of them, uh, what, how Danish people 
perceived them, what kind of housing they had, what kind of jobs, alcohol problems, and generally how they are perceived by officials like the police, let's say, or the doctors. Um, so a lot of these things are uncovered in the novel. Uh, why else I would like to recommend this novel to everybody is because, especially for me, as someone who started studying um, post-colonial studies relatively recently, uh, we tend to concentrate in the English-speaking, in the um, Anglophone sphere, we tend to concentrate on the English-speaking colonies, of course, but at the same time we kind of forget or just push aside uh, colonial histories of other countries. And in this case, uh, Miss Miller's sense of snow or Miss Miller's feeling for snow is a great example of a different culture going through the same post-colonial change and being in the same post-colonial kind of So please let me know if you have read the novel, if you enjoyed it or not so much, which parts of it did you like. Leave the comments below or follow on social media. I will leave the link in the description to this episode. Thank you for listening and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episodes. Bye!